Hmm. I apologize for my shameless promotion on the last video. Um, yes, it's shocking how I showed my books off. It actually was just um, not planned or thought about, really. It was just me uh, going for my bookshelf, looking for something interesting. Um, I've got more than one bookshelf, actually. I've got a really large bookshelf. Um, if I scan over there, I don't want to scan too far. Uh, there's my first bookshelf, and if you go further over, there's one really large one uh, about... Uh, put my finger near it. About there, you can see my finger. It's just behind my finger. That large bookshelf's got uh, books on it as well. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm living in a huge 380 square meter um, building um, where I live um, with my own um, uh, parkour gym, uh, which I built. Plus, it's got I've got a um, oh, it's got this uh, fitness a fitness uh, sort of um, CrossFit if you've ever heard of that sandbags rope climbing ropes and uh, kettlebells and weight bars chin ups bars bench press uh, squat rack you name it um, CrossFit okay um, I've got a, a room a big a, bit, a huge room, about 70 square meter room uh, for that, and I've got um, all sorts of big crash mats and all that, and if I, if I actually, I probably put it out the window there, you probably could see one of my rooms overlooking, uh, oh, overlooking my, uh, <laughs> here we go, oh, here we go, you can see, uh, not quite looking down. No, you can't quite see. Uh, anyway, it's a huge. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's a big building. Um. Oop, that's one room. Um, I have five, <laughs> five big rooms. Um, I live in there. It's just one area. Is my little area I live in. Um, it's a nice little place. It's got um. Look across here, um, my living area sort of over there. Um, yeah, I live up in this area and, and I have my gym and all these other things underneath. Business that I set up for fun. Um, but that's not my actual job, that's just my hobby. <laughs> my job is something else. I just I like to uh, keep all these things to myself. I don't you need to know all about me. All you need to know is um, I'm a crazy Christian. Crazy. Um, nuts. So you'll see how nuts I am in a second. Um, that what I believe is kind of kind of controversial. But you read John Crowder's book and you'll find it's actually not controversial at all. It's just historic. Um, yeah, I'll just go through some of them. Uh, there's some really interesting stuff. When you look at uh, Christianity from a perspective, I've had lots of spiritual experiences. I came many, many spiritual experiences, and some of them um, uh, are in that you can find them in the Bible. Uh, talks about certain ones that happened to individuals, and I've had a lot of them occur to me. And so I, I'm a firm, utterly total Bible-believing Christian who utterly believes um, in the Word of God. That the Bible is true, inspired, 100% perfect. Um, my some fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, okay, they're my brothers and sisters. They um, have a, a, a interesting teaching that happened, occurred in the late 18th century, I think. I think it's because of Darwinism, actually. To be honest, I'm not sure, but uh, rationalism, I think, came in, and uh, I think they came up with some doctrines that. A lot of churches, uh, I think a lot of churches in uh, the States believe. Um, and that was called dispensationalism. So dispensationalism is um, a teaching that uh, dispenser, if you think about a dispenser in a toilet, is when you're pushing, out, uh, pushing against it and it's dispensing soap or uh, to wash your hands or something like that, that's a dispenser. Well, dispensationalism is... Um, is a teaching that at certain periods in time in the Bible, 
through history, there was a dispensation or dispersion of miracles occurring. And that God had made these time periods to be miracle time periods. And when them time periods had finished, there were there was no miracles. Okay? Uh, and so that theory, it, that dispensation is a lot more complicated than that, but that's a really, really overview of it. Um, where it comes down to is um, they believe a lot of these charismatic Penny and Pentecostal Christians, they believe in, in the New Testament where it says there's gifts given by the Holy Spirit, gifts given by the Father, gifts given by uh, the Son Jesus um, from the Godhead. And that the gifts given by the Holy Spirit, um, speaking in tongues or uh, healing or miracles and stuff like that, that they were dispersed only to the apostles' time period. Okay, and that's what dispensation is sort of saying, that the miracles at the time of Jesus and what the apostles did were only for that t period in time, and that the rest of history of the church and uh, now we don't have those things. That's not for now. That was only for back then. Okay, when you read, I mean, clearly when you read the Bible, it does have, it has no indication of that when you're reading it. Paul's writing um, to the church and explaining spiritual gifts, there is no indication at all uh, given by him that they're, they're um, going to be done away with in about 30 years, you know. He's not, he's not writing like that. And so, I don't believe there's any real Bible indicators from a, just a plain reading of the scriptures, which is always a good indicator. I think if it's a plain reading of the scriptures, sometimes it's a good indicator, but not necessarily because um, the Bible says a natural man cannot comprehend spiritual things, and that I've I've found a lot of hidden Bible prophecy, which the Holy Spirit has actually revealed and shown me, and uh, real obvious ones are like you know. Abraham going to um, um, sacrifice his son, his only son, on the altar at Mount Moriah, which is in Jerusalem. The uh, temple temple mount is, was Mount Moriah, where Abraham was going to sacrifice him. And in the end, he uh, God says, no, don't do it, and he provides a substitute. Um, and that was prophetic that um, God... Uh, was going to, oh, like Abraham and his son, God was going to do the same thing, would offer his son as the substitute, and that was Jesus being offered as a substitute for us. Um, there's some real clear ones. That was a, a story prophecy, okay? And you've got the life of, life of Joseph as a story prophecy again, how he'd be betrayed by his brothers, Jesus being a Jew and the Jews betraying him. Um, for silver pieces, you know, Jews Iscariot for the silver, um, I think it was 30 pieces of silver. Oh, I have to do some Bible reading. You know, gets betrayed, but then gets promoted to second uh, overall. Pharaoh, in this case, representing God the Father, Jesus second overall, God the Son, and the, all the um, stars and the moon and the... Uh, uh, the, star, the sun, the moon, and the stars, which represent Israel in the scriptures, all bowing before him. Basically, they were all, at that point in the prophetic story, um, Jesus is going to make himself known to the Jewish nation. Okay, but he saves the uh, saves the world in that case in the um, Joseph uh, story prophecy, and that's what Jesus is doing and is going to do. So. I'm looking forward to when the Jewish nation, um, Jesus does do that with the Jewish nation, and that prophecy coming to play, coming into part play. Um, there's lots and lots of them. Um, and yeah, it's an actual man can't comprehend. But the dispensationism was um, basically saying, you know, the miracles and all that don't occur. Now I've seen, uh, I've actually been lucky enough to have seen miracles and they've occurred. Okay, around just in my personal life and in my family's life. I've had a sister cured of cancer. Now, I know a lot of people have died of cancer, um, and so I, f I, I do feel sorry for you. I, I, I think that's uh, a terrible tragedy. 
but God um, has cured my my sister of cancer, and so I know that He is a healing God who does can do miracles today. If He didn't heal your family member when you prayed, um, we, we, there are we I could debate and theologize and all sorts of ages about why why why, um, but I don't know. You have to talk to the God yourself about that. Only I'm I'm very very fortunate that my family member has been cured. My mother actually uh, had a failed kidney and was going to have to get it operated on, and um, and they can't they don't fix themselves. If you know anything about that, and it was miraculously boom fixed. The cane was functioning, and the doctors didn't know why. Bang! That was my mother, my sister. So there's been family healings, and they're personal healings uh, in the family. So I know that they weren't made up. Okay, they weren't um, someone else's story of it happening. It was a story I can relate to and personally validate healings for today. So dispensation as well. When I my granddad uh, was a Jehovah Witness, and he um, Jehovah Witnesses believe in dispensation. So do um, some Baptists um, have it, independent Baptists have it, uh, but that belief, well the Jehovah Witnesses don't believe in miracles for today and they, and that tongues are demonic and so do the, you know, Southern Baptist, or, uh, sorry, the certain dispensationist churches, they're all saying, uh, speaking tongues, gift of the Holy Spirit, those things aren't for today and they're actually demonic evil. As it's what they're saying, and so um, uh, my sister getting healed. My granddad uh, said the devil actually healed her. Okay, he could not believe that God would do it because he doesn't believe in the gift of healing for today. So he has to give the glory and the actual miracle um, uh, that occurred has to give the credit to the devil instead of to God. I've see so dispensation is uh ism for me is a real tragedy uh, in Christianity and I reckon it's a real division and it's really sad that it actually is um that people believe it when it's actually um uh, not true. Um yeah so my granddad um I prayed and prayed and this is the uh, power of prayer I guess. Uh, I prayed for my granddad and I said <laughs> I wanted my granddad since we'd um I was disclaiming how we'd got thrown out of the Jehovah Witness Church. I was only young, so don't give you know, don't um, blame me. But my parents got thrown out of the um Jehovah Witness Church and disfellowshipped. Okay. And that means none of the Jehovah Witnesses were allowed to talk to us anymore or, or fellowship with us and we we're basically, you know, doomed to hell, I guess, from their eyes. Um and it was only because um, my dad and uh, they had a home group, you know, a group meeting together in a home and having Bible studies. And my dad was very passionate, my mum and dad, and they lo used to love studying the Bible. And they were right into it. And they came up with questions they couldn't answer. The Jehovah Witnesses were having, you know, like they couldn't answer in their home group. So they, their home group went to the Jehovah Witness um, church, you know, to the elders. And was sincerely asking these questions because they were struggling uh, to answer them in the home group. No one really in their Bible studies could really answer them. So, um, and because of the consistent questioning, the Jehovah Witness Church decided to disfellowship all of them, just throw them all out. Okay, because they were asking questions. <laughs> oh, that seems funny. Actually, they did us a favour. I am so glad I was disfellowshipped. I'm glad I was too young to even uh, care. Um, I only remember memories of um, playing outside. I don't re remember actually too much else apart from I thought it was boring and was outside playing as a little kid. Um, but anyway, because of that, uh, it was a bit sad. Sad story, really. My grand. Um, mother and my granddad, who were Jehovah Witnesses, weren't allowed to fellowship with us anymore, and we were cut off from seeing our grandparents. And see, that's it it's a travesty. Um, lo we're love, okay? Love is God's char main characteristic. He 
wants to show, when he gave his son, he was showing love to the world. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Okay, so love. Um, just, he is all about family, and so just fellowship and not letting your family see you is, um, is a very, very sad thing. Um, anyway, so for years and years, and I grow up, and then I become this Christian, I started having amazing encounters with God, and going, wow, this is real, do 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 I'm thinking, well, my granddad, I don't want my granddad to miss out on knowing God and just be part of a religion, believing some religion that's not true and actually not actually having, uh, like I believe sincerely that Jehovah Witnesses want to have a relationship with God. They just don't have one. Okay? They sincerely want to believe the truth, but they just uh, haven't got the truth. Okay, Simple as that. Some as Mormons, they, they are sincere people, but sincerely deceived. Simple as that. So, um, in the sincerity, I thought, well, I would like to talk to my granddad. How can I do that? He won't talk to me because I'm just fellowship, even though I was only like a five-year-old. Come on. Um, he wouldn't talk to my dad. I couldn't. My nana died, so we never got to see my nana. And it was sad we missed out on her, uh, seeing her because she died. Um, and so I uh, earnestly prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, I would... If you can make it happen, I would love to see my granddad and talk to him uh, about things and just have a you know conversation and talk to him. And uh, I would love to see my granddad. So I prayed and prayed, and within one week of that prayer, I get a um, my dad calls me. Uh, my my dad calls me and says he had been contacted by granddad. Woo! A week after praying, remember we're talking like. Uh, 20, more than 20 odd years of never hearing from them. Okay, so that prayer, you've got to believe in miracles, right? <laughs> when you hear that prayer. So I pray and bang, voila, it happens. Um, next week he calls my dad and says, I want to come down. I'm, I'm coming down to sell a van. He had a van he was selling. Um, I want to, uh, pop in. I want to see you guys and talk, uh, see, see you and visit you. And it was like, what? <laughs> After all them years and, and all of a sudden, yeah, I knew it was, he didn't know, but I knew why he he was doing it. And so he comes down and I um, I get to see my granddad and we get to talk and all this. And he had been thrown out of the Jehovah's Witness Church. Um... And he says, it wasn't even my fault. It was complete misunderstanding. And they just fellowshipped him. After how I don't know how many years he's been in there. But they, he said, it is really weird. I didn't do anything wrong. They just got thought I had. And it was all a big misunderstanding. But they just fellowshipped me and threw me out. And so he was shocked and blown away. And he was like, what am I going to do? But he allow, it allowed him to see us. And so... <laughs> And eventually, if you think about it, I prayed, think about what what happened, I prayed to the Lord saying, if you can please let me see my granddad, if you can make it happen, I prayed that prayer and a week later, he, he had been disfellowshipped after me praying that prayer, he got disfellowshipped for totally unreasonable and not even true grounds, okay, so he was thrown out. And then I got to see him within one week. That is fast answer to prayer. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. So anyway, I got to talk to him. And I was talking about various things and how my sister had been healed of cancer and all the stuff and evidence. And he was basically so adamant because of dispensation and uh, teaching that it was the devil. The devil had healed my sister of cancer. Okay, now... Uh, probably the devil gave a cancer. Uh, now, you could reason that if he could give it, he could take it away. But now the devil's into killing and destroying. Okay? Religion that promotes killing and destroying, we know whose father they're following. We know who they're following. It's the devil. He's the destroying, loves destroying and killing. Um, whereas, um, God is, a, the new covenant is about life. Okay? And so God is the healer, loves healing people. He is the one who does it. And so my sister got healed and I give all the glory to God. I know it's God, it's not the devil. The devil, you can go jump 
it's not you, I know it's not you. <laughs> it's God, he did the healing. And so, I, after, and he was convinced, because of the dispensation, it's an evil, evil, evil uh, lie. And then I started talking about more th other things about the spiritual experience that I've had, and his conclusion after spending hours and hours discussing and talking and debating was, I must be one of the special 144,000 that the, dis uh, that the um, Jehovah Witness people believe, okay, um, are the anointed ones and written about in the book of Revelation. He came to the conclusion, I must be one of those 144,000. Um, now, I'm not a Jehovah Witness, but the Jehovah Witness guy is saying that I must be one of their special chosen elect. Um, that's irony, isn't it? The non-Jehovah Witness guy, uh, the non-Jehovah Witness guy is the elect guy, special anointed one, whereas the Jehovah Witness follower isn't. <laughs> oh, Oh, the irony. So I'm one of the apparently special ones who get to go to heaven, according to the Jehovah Witness religion, um, even though I'm not a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> God, I laugh about that one. Now, I can seriously tell you, <laughs> they are not, it's not correct, okay? Um, I definitely am anointed, but so are, is every Christian believer. Okay? <laughs> They just have got their teaching so up the whack uh, on so many fronts, and dispensationalism is just one of the wacky stuff that they've thrown into the mix. Um, yeah. So I want to talk more on dispensationalism, um, what it see, what it means, why why I don't believe it's uh, true. Um, if it was that easy to to refute, um, it, it would have gone a long time ago. So it's not easy to refute. Um, it, is, um, uh, it is a complex doctrine, I guess, um, but I categorically no, it's not true. Okay. So let's just um, leave it at that. We'll go to part two and I'll, I'll put in some reasoning why.